Hey, so you have probably already know what happened, but in one sentence it is that news about staff layoffs and overall uncertainty around KSP2 triggered a worry in the community for the future of the game. And I know I'm a bit late to the scene, but I just didn't want to overreact. Now, I'm not happy about the current state of events, especially how it affects the actual human developers, doing their jobs, being passionate about their project, but I'm not here to go ranty about that. I'm here to share a bit of a controversial take on the matter, which would be that KSP2 development should not continue going forwards. And I don't mean that the investors don't want that, because they clearly don't. I mean that it's just not going to be beneficial for the community as a whole. Now, all of us, myself included, wanted to see case be developed even further, but the continuation of the game that we see now simply does not live up to its name. I personally bought the game on a whim because I was promised the very things that I wanted to see so much in the original game, as being construction orbit, new star systems, resource gathering, and most of all, true multiplayer support. But it's been almost five years since the game was announced, and yet we haven't seen any of that. But why? Well, the development of Case P2 is deeply covered with uncertainty, but if we look closely enough, we can still see what led up to this moment and hopefully make the right decisions going forward. Kerbal Space Program 2 is a sequel, so we can't seriously talk about it without first discussing its origins, aka the original game. Did you know that the design for it came from real life, when Felipe Flangi, the man behind the idea of the game itself, used to play with uh, makeshift rockets built from fireworks, bottles, and other improvised means? These were all of course simple children's games, but at the same time they were the foundation for Kerbal Space Program and found their way into the game we all know and love. And I think that was the success of the original game. It simply allowed us to immerse ourselves into this creative world, just in a more safe manner. It wasn't the amazing graphics or utmost realism that kept me playing for hours. It was the freedom of putting my imagination to life, seeing as how my rockets become more and more advanced, how I design new ways to overcome challenges, and how my ideas allow me to reach further into space. And I'm sure you've all felt this when playing the game, and you can clearly see how someone put their soul into it. However good it is, KSP is an old game by now. It's more than a decade old, actually. And that's not a problem by itself, no. But the problem is that it's not really finished, is it? I mean, there are tons of things that we want to see added to the game. To prove my point, let's look at more than 3,000 mods created for it. But mods are more of a, oh honey, we already have that at home solution compared to native support. To illustrate, there's compatibility. Mods can't go about and change the existing user interface too much, because it's very likely they'll just become incompatible with each other, so what they do instead, they just add new windows. For example, I play with Kerbalism, a mod that adds so many things that quite soon you realize that you just love to see something like a craft management UI that'll hide everything related to piloting the craft and just allow you to focus on resource management, signed experiments, and all that. But honey, we already have that at home. It's called yet another window on top of everything else. And it'll always be like that, because the game kind of didn't plan for supporting precisely this functionality in the future. Then let's take multiplayer support. It's a notoriously hard thing to add if you haven't planned for it in advance, because now you've got so many more things to deal with, like synchronizing everyone's view in actions, performance, because now you'll have not just a single huge craft to keep in mind, but potentially tens of them, all requiring physics simulation real time. Then there's hacking and bad behavior, and on a similar topic, you'll need new gameplay mechanics like bans for crashing into somebody on purpose, and fine slash rewards for good or bad actions, like stealing resources or helping other players. All that requires new user interface, and just to top it all off, mods now need to account for all of the above as well. 
All these are fundamental changes, and it's not a problem to add a new fuel tank or a new engine to the game, but making such drastic changes might require access to the entire codebase of the game, and KSP is not an open source project. And then there's more, there are new game engines now, there's better hardware capabilities, and if we're adding multiplayer support, maybe we should add AI players into the mix, and I hope now you can see that simply continuing to develop KSP1 wasn't really an option. Sure, we might add a few more planets into the mix and a few more parts, but if we want to add multiplayer and colonies, we need to start from scratch. But that's not going to be a problem, because we have the amazing community, which is ready to tell us what they want to see. So what are we going to do? And I can just imagine like a meeting or something in Private Division that goes like, so how should we make a sequel? Let's talk to the community, focus on fundamental changes, let the community do the rest. Nope, we'll just focus on remaking everything that already was in Case B1. I mean, I get it, maybe it's just hard to sell games these days without fancy graphics, but that's not what Case B is about. It's about freedom of creativity. Instead of focusing on pretty looks, they should have reached out to the community and asked us what we want to see. Maybe ask us which mods we enjoyed and add them to the core game. Maybe add multiplayer support first and then add fancy looks. But no. We're just gonna start developing KSP2 under as many layers of NDA as possible. The problem is that what we have now, I remind you, after almost five years since announcement, is just a buggy version of KSP1 with graphics that require a supercomputer to run. Oh, and a promise to maybe add multiplayer support someday later, although I think we can all see how that's going recently. Just imagine how cool it would have been if they reached out to the community and asked us what we want, started with fundamental changes first, maybe even offload smaller iterative changes to the mod makers. I mean, tell me in the comments, which would you choose, a buggy and fancy version of KSP1, or maybe a simpler game, yes, but one that has the foundation to build further functionality as it develops. I don't know, but seeing just how corporate the game became and how it's lost its soul, I can only hope for one thing, that we as a community take over. I mean, we've already proven that we have the knowledge and passion to make 3000 mods for our favorite game, so I can only hope that we unite our efforts and maybe start this new journey where we will make our own game, the one that we deserve and the one that we will actually enjoy playing. What do you think?